Welcome to Lecture Online. Here we're starting a new chapter in astronomy. We're going to talk about the Earth, but especially the Earth in context of it being a planet. So let's start out with where the Earth belongs in our solar system. Notice today we consider that we have eight planets in the solar system. We also have an asteroid belt, and of course we have what we call the trans-Neptunian objects. And of course one of them, Pluto, has been in the limelight because for the first time ever in history we've been able to take pictures of Pluto and know what it looks like. And it's beginning to look like a real planet as well, all kinds of interesting geological formations. And so I wouldn't be surprised if in the future Pluto becomes one of the planets again and we'll go back to nine planets perhaps. But in the meanwhile, we are down to eight planets. We have the four gas planets, we have the four terrestrial planets, and we have an asteroid belt in between. And the Earth is one of the four, as a, a four terrestrial planets. And we consider the third planet from the Sun. Sometimes it's considered the third rock from the Sun because it's a rocky planet. Now the four terrestrial planets, they're primarily made out of rock and metal. Uh, for Earth, Venus and, and Mercury, or especially for Earth and Venus, it's about half metal and half rock, which is amazing. You wouldn't think of the Earth as being half metal, but in the interior, it's primarily metal, and so later on we'll look at the details of that. But yes, the Earth is about half rock and half metal. What's interesting about the Earth is that it's the largest of the four terrestrial planets. Not only that, if you put Earth if you look at the other three terrestrial planets, you put them together, the mass of the Earth is actually larger than the mass of the other three terrestrial planets combined. Earth is also unique in many ways, but three very important ways. And let's take a look at the three important ways. For one, the distance between the Earth and the Sun is just perfect. Perfect for all kinds of things, but especially perfect because it puts the average temperature of the surface of the Earth to be between 0 and 100 degrees centigrade which means it's between the freezing and boiling point of water. Now why that's especially important for the Earth is that the Earth has a lot of water and because the average temperature and for most of the surface day or night the temperature is between 0 and 100 degrees centigrade which with an average temperature of 14 degrees centigrade or 57 degrees Fahrenheit it causes most of that water on the surface to be in liquid condition. So it is between freezing and, and boiling. Of course we do have ice and we do have steam, sometimes steam coming up from the ground, but that's because there's internal heating. We'll talk about that later as well. But the fact that a lot of the Earth is covered with water and that that abundant water on the Earth is in liquid state has tremendous consequences in many, many ways. Geologically, because of the effect that water has on the Earth and also for the ability to sustain life. And that's the third major difference of the Earth. Only the Earth has as a planet or any moon in our solar system is known to have life. That's extremely unique. Now, it could be that life is very abundant in many other places in the universe, but we don't know that yet. Mathematically, probability-wise, we must say there's probably thousands, millions, maybe even billions of planets out in the, in the universe that, have, that do have life on them as well. However, for now, the only planet, the only, and compared to even all the moons in our solar system, our planet, the Earth, is the only place in the solar system where we know there is life. Now, we've been looking for life in other places. We're beginning to do that. We've been looking on Mars, the surface of Mars, because we know that Mars looked a lot like the Earth as far as geologically. You used to have water, flowing water on Mars. And so we know that there's a possibility that Mars used to have life on it, but we haven't found it yet. Not any evidence so far that there's life or has been life on Mars or any other place in the solar system. There's a possibility that some of the moons, like the moons around Jupiter, like Europa, and the moons around Saturn may harbor life as well. But as of now, we of course have not yet found it, although there's probably some planning and making some trips to some of these moons to take a closer look. You never know, there may be life as well. But if there is, it's probably very scarce, very mic microbial type of life. The Earth has abundant life on it in all various life forms over a million different species, again, extremely unique in our solar system. So we're going to talk about the Earth in many different ways, especially geologically, so we want to be able to compare other moons and planets as we find them, compared to the Earth in various ways. And so it's a good, a good place to start to understand Earth as a planet, so we can compare all the, all the other planets and some of the moons to the Earth as well. And that's where we start in this chapter, the chapter about Earth as a planet.